Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced and you are listening to Select Star from Data Lake. And in this episode, what I want to do is talk about uh, data reflections. So data reflections are a really cool feature of Dremio, but to really understand like why data reflections are awesome, you need to understand materialized views. So first we'll start kind of discussing what that is. And this all comes down to the sort of like, how do you optimize querying data? Because at the end of the day, what matters is that we query our data and we get the answers that we want. And generally we want our optimizations to work, make things faster, but we also want them to be easy. Like, you know, in another podcast on Data Nation, I was talking about how why abstractions matter. The reason why abstractions matter and things that sort of make things easier is because it doesn't split my thought process in the sense that like I can allocate more of my time thinking to the fundamental problem I'm trying to solve in the sense asking the right question to get the data that I need to get the insights that I want you know versus having to think about okay how do I ask my question because the data is you know to optimize you know like basically think through all these other thought processes to optimize the data because I'm not because that's not me thinking about my fundamental problem or my fundamental insight it's me these are things that are distracting me from that thought process so anything that can make optimization easier for the analyst so that way they don't have to think about performance, they just get performance, is pretty cool. Okay, so in that venture, so let's imagine you have like a really large table. Okay, the problem is every time you query that table, even if you just need a little bit of information from that table, it takes a really long time because you, depending on how your query structure, you might be scanning big, big, big chunks of that table or if the whole table. So there's different ways you can kind of deal with that. Now, of course, there's things like partitioning and, and indexing and other things that I'll talk about in other episodes. But one approach is to do what's called a materialized view. Okay, so the concept of a view is essentially like taking a query that you that you run regularly and then putting it behind the namespace. So basically, let's say I frequently select star where all you know, let's pretend it's like a voter. I always like to use the voter example because it's, it's an easy one to think through. So there's a table of all voter data for the country. And I say, okay, select star from voters where state equals Georgia. Okay. And let's say, you know, I'm, I'm a Georgia political operator and I'm running that query over and over and over again. Well, that probably seems like a little extra work than I need to, to type that all out. So what would be easier if I could just sit there and say like, you know, I create what's called a view that basically assumes that query. So I would just create a view that's called, you know, Georgia voters. So now I could just do select star from Georgia voters. I'm still querying the voters table. It's just, I don't have to put that where clause because Georgia voters at namespace assumes that query. So I'm still running it against the original data set. So views are essentially virtual data sets because there's no copy of the data. So again, generally whenever you hear that term virtual virtualization, it just means no copy. Okay. You're able to view a different data set than what you're referring to at, or from a different place but without copying it. So it's a virtual data set because there's no copy. But sometimes you're like, okay, well, it's still not fast enough because you're still scanning the full table. And so you're still scanning the table with all the other 49 states with the voters. You just, you know, gave yourself a shortcut. So what you do is you create what's called a materialized view. And the difference is a materialized view is not virtual. There is a copy. So what it does, it'll run the query, take the results of the query and make a physical copy of that data. And in the future, when I query, let's say like materialized, let's say it's called materialized Georgia voters. Every time I say select star from materialized Georgia voters, I'm gonna be querying that subset of the data. So it's gonna be a lot faster, okay? Because I already have the pre-computed results, but oftentimes this leads to a few challenges. Okay, one, um, that's under a different name. So again, if I, I have to query materialized Georgia voters, if I don't query that name, then I'm still querying the whole table. If I query Georgia voters, you know, the ver the view, I'm still querying the original table. If I query voters, I'm still querying the full table. So I only get the performance if I hit the name right namespace. And the problem with that is the end user, the analyst has to one, be aware of the namespace and then think about, hey, which is the right namespace for me to query for this particular query. So again, that whole, you know, just allocation of my thoughts, my, my thought power when I'm trying to solve a problem and get to solve my fundamental issue, which is again, the question and the insights that I'm trying to derive. Two, there's an issue of freshness. 
Okay, now all databases automatically sync the materialized views. So there's a chance that that materialized view, the actual like physical copy, isn't up to date to the actual table because it's the results at the time that the materialized view was created. So you might want to have to figure out, you have to figure out how to keep that in sync, which some databases might do that automatically. Some, uh, you know, it's a manual process. You know, there's different ways of doing it depending on the particular database you're using or tool you're using. Okay. Um, so you have these, again, levels of these levers of complication. Okay. And on top of that is like that materialized view only works for that particular view. So what happens if I create, if I have another, uh, you know, I want to suddenly do like all Florida Georgia voters from Macon County, you know, I can, and I want to materialize that I'm making a whole separate copy. Okay. Every time I make a new materialized view, it's going to make a fresh copy. So if I were to, let's say, materialize two different views on that data, just sorted slightly differently. Okay. I've created two complete set copy copies. Okay. Every materialized view namespace is going to create a copy that's not reusable for any other namespace. Okay. Um, cool. Now, basically what Dremio's data reflections are is a very similar concept, but addresses all those three problems. Okay. So instead of you creating like, Hey, every time I query this namespace, Let's make a copy of this subset query for that namespace. What Dremio does is it allows you to turn on reflections for a particular data set. And generally, you, those, those reflections fall into one of two main categories. There's raw reflections, which is going to be more like materialized views. It's actually, it is creating a copy of the data set. But it's just not a raw copy of the results. It's actually a copy of the results um, done as an Apache iceberg table. Okay, and if you listen to any of my previous talks about Apache Iceberg, Apache Iceberg is it's not going to provide you just the benefits of having a copy of the data, but it's going to prevent also allow you to optimally query that data because of the metadata that is created uh, for that table. So the, basically, the metadata acts almost like as, as several different layers of indexes to allow you to query that data more performantly. So you're getting the speed of you know let's say the the physical copy, you know, the physical copy of a subset of data, but you can also optimize that because in Dremio, you can actually choose how that copy is sorted or uh, partitioned. And again, it would be the data engineer who's doing that, not the data analyst per se. Okay. So then, so if I'm the data engineer, I would just flip a switch. I can choose to set more detailed settings if I want, or I can just, just, just flip the switch and it materializes, let's say, a view. So again, if I have that voters table, I would create a view called, you know, Voters Georgia, okay? And then I would just turn on reflections that on that, okay? And then if someone created a view derived from that for like Georgia, you know, voters of Macon County and they created another view off of that for voters of um, I have other counties in Georgia, you know, all of that would get the benefit. And the thing is that if the analyst doesn't, doesn't even need to know reflections are turned on, they just need to know, oh, okay, I have this view that I'm using, this view of, you know, Georgia voters. And it will basically, Dremio knows the relationship of different data sets. Like it'll know, okay, hey, this data set was created by this data set or this data set was, is, you know, the parent of this data set. So essentially, like if you query a view and its parent or any, any parent or grandparent has a data reflection created on it, Dremio will evaluate whether that reflection can be used to speed up the query. Okay, so there might be multiple reflections in the tree to that data set, in the lineage of that data set, and it will evaluate which of them is maybe the best one to use and use that to get the fastest query. And the analyst doesn't even have to be aware that the reflections even exist. They're just going to get used. Dremio will figure out all those details. So easier than the analyst. The analyst just queries the data. They don't have to think about all these extra namespaces. Okay, two, Dremio is going to keep it up to sync. Okay, so basically, um, generally, if you're talking about any data set that can connect to Dremio, and this, that's going to be another benefit, particularly with Dremio. Um, you know, if you're talking about any data set that you can connect to Dremio, um, you can you can you can turn on reflections on it. Now, generally, you can set up a reflection schedule. So generally, it's like I think like generally like I think it defaults to like an hour. So every hour, it'll. Um, I'm not actually even sure if it defaults to an hour. I think you have to set it. But, you know, let's say you set it to an hour, every hour it'll refresh 
which means it'll sort of update the results. So it'll run the query again and update the, the copy. Okay. Um, and then two, um, you can manually refresh it. So you can trigger. So basically, if you know that the data is only going to be updated at a particular time, you create a script that just like sends the command to, man to, to manually refresh the data at that particular time. Okay. And again, this is what the data engineer would do. Okay. But it'll keep that in sync. And again, you can do that across any data set. So if you have a MySQL table connected to Dremio, you have Snowflake connected to Dremio, you have a data lake connected to Dremio, all of that you can go use reflections on. Now, taking it a step further, um, if the under, now there's one benefit if you have, if the data is on a data lake and the data is already in Apache Iceberg table. If it's already an Apache Iceberg table, then it can incrementally update, which means instead of it having to like recalculate the whole query and reconstruct the reflection, it can actually capture the changes and then update incrementally. So it's almost a real time updates. You don't even have to trigger a refresh, it'll just update. Um, meaning like if you have, you know, one or two reflections in the lineage of a parent data set, it'll just automatically kind of up all those down the tree. And again, the analyst, completely unaware of all of this. They're just going to notice that their queries are super fast. Okay, that's that's the benefit of this. Like usually like, otherwise you're either creating materialized views to achieve this or creating all sorts of extra copies of your data set and having to create pipelines to create all those, keep consistency between all those copies. This eliminates all that. Okay, so you just worry about creating sort of your the modeling of, of basically virtual views. Okay, you create all these logical views zero you know again basically initially no copy and just turn on reflections where it makes sense okay now dremio actually has a feature that'll actually recommend you where it makes sense to do a reflection so that way you don't even have to think about that if you're the data engineer okay you know it'll monitor the query patterns of users and say okay hey based on hey the queries that are coming in and the performance of those queries these are probably the the reflections you'd want made okay and the cool thing is that they, they're in their own category of query. So one of the cool things about Dremio is that you can actually have different clusters. So, you know, not every not every query should go to the same cluster because you don't want to still want to pay for the same level of compute um, instances for different queries. Some might be lower priority, higher priority. So, you know, you could theoretically set up a lower cost cluster to handle the re and then route any refresh queries to that cluster or to a separate cluster so that way the cluster that's running your queries isn't in the same cluster that is handling the refreshes so this allows you to kind of figure out hey how do you want to handle like the cost considerations as far as like the computa computation also make sure that there's any sort of fighting for resources between you know your analytical queries versus these refresh queries when they do happen. Cool. And again, it doesn't stop there. That's all just raw reflections. So again, I remember there's so there's two main categories. There's also aggregate reflections. And this is really particularly powerful for BI dashboards. Because what happens is that it creates sort of a, 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 an essentially Apache iceberg table of the aggregate results. So it'll like run the total of sum. Um, and you get to choose like, hey, these are the dimensions I want to optimize for. And these are the um, uh, measures that I want to optimize for. And then it'll create a table of all the right out, you know, all the pre-computed numbers for that, that you would want. Okay. So based all the measures based on, on all the dimensions. So then when you plug in that table into sort of thing like a Tableau or a Power BI or a Looker um, or a Hex, some sort of uh, BI tool, when you update the table, it's going to be sub-second response times because it's using those cached aggregate results and you're doing this without having to create some big sort of cube or extract some sort of other data structure that you then have to worry about maintaining because again dremio is handling all the handling all the details it's abstracting away all that work from you and that's the beauty of this is abstracting away the things that generally make the data engineering side the optimization side hard and the data analytics side you know knowing how to best query the table to to take advantage of the things the data engineer did it just abstracts all that away so the life is easier for the data engineer to provide optimization and it's easier for the analyst to take advantage of that optimization. Um, and when you use sort of Dremio as that central layer, it also just makes virtualization more practical because oftentimes if you use other platforms like a, like a Denodo or a, um, a Trino, what happens is that 
the queries generally get pushed down to the sources. So basically you can federate data, but it's oftentimes really difficult to do it at scale um, because you might have competition of, let's say you you know it's a transactional database and your your analytical queries are competing with the with the oper with the um, transactional queries. But with Dremio, you can turn on reflections on the tables uh, in your, let's say, your, your transactional database. So at the end of the day, you're just connecting your database, you turn on reflections, Dremio will handle maintaining sort of a, a, cop, a, a copy of those tables uh, that your analytical queries will use without you having to worry about how to sync them or what is the, the pipeline logic for it. It'll just kind of work at scale. And Dremio is kind of handling all the, the harder work and logistics. Okay. Um, which is really cool. And again, it works for all data sources. So again, if you're connecting to Apache Druid, if you're connecting to Snowflake, if you're connecting to Oracle, you can take advantage of reflections. That's different than currently what's available, let's say on something like a Starburst Galaxy where you they have materialized views. Um, but I think that only works with Hive sometimes and Iceberg Cables. Okay, and then they have another thing called um, Star, Starburst Warp Speed but that requires you to spin up a different type of cluster. So that means you have to like think about, hey, is this cluster a, an accelerated cluster or a not accelerated Starburst cluster? And even then it generally works mainly for like uh, iceberg tables. Um, doesn't work for all your different sources. And that, and then the, producer, the reason why that one doesn't work for like all sources is because technically part of what it's doing is not necessarily, again, creating like creating like reflections. Again, it's creating that iceberg representation. So you can just take the data from anywhere and make an iceberg table out of it. Um, I think in the, in the servers when they're actually creating like different like types of indexes. And if you're familiar with how indexes work, they're like a similar, they're like a data structure that helps the engine kind of know where to start reading the, the, the data source. So essentially like the index is going to help them figure out, okay, here's where I should start reading at the, at the source. So you're still pushing to the source. But the problem is, um, every data source is data is actually structured differently fundamentally at, at, in in its where it's stored. So like my SQL database is going to store the data differently than a Postgres database, which is sort of different than Snowflake does and whatnot. So creating an index that kind of works for all of them, it can be really, really difficult because they all structure the actual storage of the data differently. Okay. While, you know, Dremio is taking more of that sort of like, again, making that iceberg representation and using that as iceberg representation to substitute during your queries, which allows it to work consistently across your different data sources. And then again, when it is an iceberg data source, you do get a little extra benefit with the incremental updates. Um, you know, so it's a really powerful feature, it really makes it where you can do virtualization at scale. It really makes it where you can really minimize your, the actual manual ETL work you have to do. And it really makes it easier for modeling because you don't have to like create full on data marts in the sense where you're creating all these like sub copies of data that you then also have to manage. Okay, instead you are creating a virtual data mart. You're essentially still creating the, the logical modeling of your data that you wouldn't say, okay, here's my you know, accounting data, here's my marketing data, but it's all done through views, okay, without having to necessarily create data copies. Okay, and then a lot of the, the manipulation of that data can also be done logically uh, with the way sort of Dremio is architected. So again, it just makes it where you're really gonna minimize your data movement costs, your storage costs, uh, network access costs, all sorts of different costs, as well as making it easier for everybody. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people who actually have taken advantage of this. Like uh, Dremio has a cool part of the, the website. If you go to dremio.com slash customers, that really kind of goes in depth of like different customer stories uh, where, you know, there's certain customers that I say like 60% on their storage costs. Other customers, you know, went from, you know, certain data requests taking three weeks to three days because it just simplified the whole process and got rid of like a lot of steps. Okay, and at the end of the day, if we can get, if we can make, if abstractions can make our lives easier in setting up the solution, we can then focus on the solution. That's sort of the key benefit here. Like at the end of the day, you know, costs, saving costs are great, but at the end of the day, it's like, did we do the thing we need to do, which is get the insights that we need. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. My name is... Alex Merced. Uh, this is Select Star from Data Lake, and I'll see you all in the next episode.